Good morning, uh, my name is John McConnell. I'm Director of Innovation and Quality with Unfust in Ireland. Uh, we're a smaller company even than Switzerland. We have 10,000 employees. Um, so the Innovation Department, our Directorate, has been set up two years ago, so we're, we're new. We've been innovating for years and years, but um, we only formalised it in the recent past. So today what I'm going to talk to you about is an Irish context for innovation. And I'm going to um, talk about our framework and our innovation process, and then I'm going to give you some samples of uh, four projects that we've either launched or will be launched shortly. So Ireland um, has just come out of a very difficult financial time, and the, the government has launched a strategy called um, Innovation 2020. And that it aims to position Ireland as a global innovation leader. Um, as you can see from the slide there, we have a lot of leading companies based out of Ireland. And in the past, um, the, the presence of those companies was based mainly on ma manufacturing and on low tax base. Now there's a move uh, to um, innovation and R&D. We also have a, a flourishing entrepreneurial and startup environment. So, that's, that provides a, a backdrop to um, our innovation activities with the non-post. Um, as all, with all non-posts, we have uh, significant strategic capabilities. Um, you know, we, we have infrastructure, we have the largest retail network in the country, the, the largest fleet, um, and we have a lot of, we've developed a lot of expertise, particularly in financial services over the years. Um, and we also have intangible assets, um, mainly one of our trusted brand. Um, so these are strategic capabilities that we can build on. Our process itself, you know, we, like all postal operators, we are focusing on eight key business areas. And they range, you know, all the way from communications, document management, down to, to new businesses in, in new areas. Uh, includes logistics, and a big part of our income and revenue is from um, government services. Uh, our innovation process itself, um, generating insights and ideas, comes from a plethora of resources, you know, from consumers, other posts, um, competition. We launched uh, an innovation challenge with the help of Brody Bueller there recently, and that's a challenge and a competition that we set up for our senior management. Uh, where we have seven teams, cross-functional teams, working on seven ideas, um, which they have to submit a business case and do a presentation to the innovation board, which is the executive team with an unpost. Um, so that's one example of how we're keeping our pipeline of ideas full. Um, so we break our ideas and concepts into, and uh, we either divide them into projects our initiatives, our discoveries. And, you know, projects are what we're good at, what we deliver day in, day out. Um, and initiatives and discoveries are the areas that our innovation team focus on. Sorry. Um, so our projects are broken up between commercial inno innovation and necessary innovation. Commercial innovation is projects that protect or grow our market share. Necessary innovation is projects we just have to do to feature or to, to maintain our competitiveness. And then initiatives and discoveries, um, you know, new services, leveraging our assets and new businesses. That red line is supposed to uh, surround the bottom two because that's the focus areas for our innovation team currently. So if we just look at some recent innovations, and um, our, our first one that I'm, is, has been launched uh, two months ago, and we call it Address Pal. Now the backdrop to this is 34% um, of Ireland's imports come from the UK, but th we have retail, online retail outlets that um, don't deliver to Ireland or charge a premium to Ireland. To Ireland. So what we have done is we have a subsidiary in, in the UK and we, people can go online and they're given a, a sort of a pseudo address in the UK. Within that ad ad address is a code. 
that allows you to order the, the, the item is delivered to our subsidiary in the UK and that code tells us what retail outlet you can collect it from. So we have a large network of retail outlets. So you can collect your item at a very low cost from your retail outlet. So that has been launched and is extremely successful. The second sample I have here is, um, is our delivery box. And again, this has been launched in the last few months. Um, so all it is, it's not a new concept. Everybody spoke about, those about delivery boxes. But um, our delivery box is, has some unique features. Um, you know, when the parcel is placed in, in the box or delivered, um, the, the box is scanned and notification goes by email to the, to the, cus to the consumer to say that they have a, a parcel. Um, it, it contains two keys, one for the consumer and one for the postal operative. So a postal operative has a key, unique key for each route. Um, so we also take collections from the delivery box. So with swap outs, if you want to leave something in the box, the postal operative will collect it when, he, when, he, when, he, when he's delivering. Okay. Then we, we have a, an, an initiative which is, I suppose, totally out of the postal area, and it's in tourism. And um, the Irish Tourist Board have developed a route from all along the, the west coast of Ireland. It's the longest route in, in the world. It's 2,500 kilometers long. It's called the Wild Atlantic Way. So when we superimposed our retail outlets on the Wild Atlantic Way, the route, we discovered that 16% of our retail outlets were on or close to the, the route. So we said, look, there must be some way we can capitalize on this development. So we, we're starting off with the, a passport for the Wild Atlantic Way. And so you buy your passport in a retail outlet and you get it stamped at each discovery point along the route. Um, the, the way we make money is we charge 10 euro for the passport when it's bought in the retail outlet. And the, all the stamps are free. So what we're, find, what we're proposing is that people might not do their the Wild Atlantic Way all in one holiday, but they come, come back and, and they can keep the pass, passport until it's completed. Um, the, the picture there is of Skellig, anybody that watches Star Wars, the, the part of the Star Wars, the last few scenes were, were filmed in Skellig Michael, which is in, in Kerry, and it's on the Wild Atlantic Way. And the, and the last, um, I suppose, initiative or, or project we had came from an ideation session, and it is to I suppose, take advantage of um, our GPO, which is um, 200 years old, one of the oldest GPOs in the world and has been operational for those 200 years. It was also the control center for the, um, the War of Independence that started in 1916. And the proposal was to develop a, uh, an interpretive center and a museum within the um, GPO itself. So that has been built and will open in the next few weeks. And it is estimated that approximately 300,000 people will, will visit that um, interpretive center each year. So it's a, more an opportunistic piece of innovation that we've carried out. So if you're ever in Dublin, please visit our GPO. So that concludes my slides for today. Thank you very much. <laughs>